We've covered lots about conditions and loops in previous videos, so let's pause for a moment and recap what we've covered. First up, we can use if, else, and else if to check conditions. You can pass any condition you want, as long as ultimately it boils down to a single Boolean, true or false. It might be a simple if. It might be an if and an else. Or an if and an else if and an else if, else if, else if, and then an else. It's down to you. It's very flexible. If you want to, you can combine conditions using pipe pipe for or and ampersand ampersand for and. Or means if either one of my two separate conditions are true, the whole thing is true. And and means if both of them are true, then the whole thing is true. But if either one or both are false, then it's false. You might find if you have lots of conditions, using switch works out better, not least because Swift will make sure your check is exhaustive. This might mean adding a default case to handle things like strings or integers where there are too many cases to check reasonably. If one of your switch cases wants to, they can use fall through to go through to the next case, but it's really, really not used commonly. We have a ternary conditional operator, which checks W, T, F. What's your condition? What to do when it's true? And what to do when it's false? W, T, F. It is, I know, hard to read at first, but trust me, it's very, very commonly used in SwiftUI. We have for loops, which are great for looping over finite sets of data. It could be an array, a dictionary, a set, a range, or something else. You can assign items from your array or whatever you want to, to a loop variable to use inside the loop body. But if you don't want it, you can use an underscore instead to mean ignore the loop variable here. We have while loops, which are fantastic for running until a condition is false. Give it any condition you want and it'll keep on going again and again and again, indefinitely, potentially forever, until you're done. And if you want to, with both for and while, you can skip loot items by using continue or break. Continue means skip the rest of the remaining iteration and go on to the next one and carry on as normal. Break means skip the rest of the remainder and exit the whole loop, carry on after there. That's another huge chunk of code learned. And honestly, with conditions and loops behind you, you can really start to write some useful Swift programs.